to learn from you tonight, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to me more than any man can in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Somebody be seated. A round of applause for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, brethren, I want to welcome every one of us to his presence tonight. Uh, we are continuing in the lesson we started three weeks ago, understanding money. But now, we are turning into uh, credit. Credit. Credit by our definition here is the lender's merchandise and the borrower's lord. The book of Proverbs chapter number 6. It's Proverbs 22 rather. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter number 22 verse 7. Proverbs chapter number 22 verse 7. The rich rule it over the poor. And the borrower is servant to the lender. The rich rule over the poor. The borrower is a servant to the lender. Now, the credit we are talking about is really broader than money. It's not just money. It's bigger than money. But we are just coming in with money. The lender's merchandise. Something that the lender sells. Like goods. Like if, if you look at the case of a bank and the those that take loans from the bank, you will see that it is the loan that the bank is selling. The money that the bank gives out to lender, uh, borrowers, that is what the bank is selling. Those are the goods that the banks are selling. That is why many of the poor think banks don't want to give loan. No. Banks are there to give loan. That is, what the, that is their major business. Praise the Lord. When you see, they say a bank is doing retail, retail banking. You know, that is what they do. Giving out money to people who want to use it for whatever. Now, the reason why the bank find it difficult to give loan to the poor is that the poor does not know how to use the loan. Hey, pastor, what do you mean? Yes, that's the truth. If he knew how to use money in the first place, he would not be poor. I know many of us will argue with this, but that's the truth. If he knows what to do with money, he will not be poor. Is pastor discriminating against the poor? No. The reason why I'm saying this is so that somebody will be challenged to want to come out of that poverty. Anyone under the sound of my voice, anywhere in the world. Because it is easy to come out from under poverty. Very, very easy. Very, very easy. The first thing it takes is determination. Then after that, discipline. Then after that, commitment to where you are going. That's all. Just three. Determination, discipline, commitment. Anybody can come from, out, from inside the deepest kind of poverty to become one of the richest. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. It's not a function of prayer. Prayer is just to open your eyes to see secrets. That's what prayer does. For the poor, if a poor man thinks he will pray and become rich, the pastor is deceiving him. He will not. He will never even be. He can never be. By prayer alone, no, it's not possible. But the pastor will teach how to use prayer to discover yourself. Use prayer to discover your purpose. Use prayer for guidance into your purpose. Then it now remains determination, discipline, and commitment to now become rich. That's all the prayer can do for you. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Let me take that Proverbs chapter 22 verse 7 again. The rich rule it over the poor. It is natural. 
I was telling somebody some years ago about labor. Labor always look for wages. Is that not so? Uh, somebody is not here. Labor will always search for wages. It is just like somebody that is thirsty. He will look for where there is water. Am I correct? That is the way labor behaves. Labor looks for where there is wages. Now, when he gets to where he could find wages, labor will stay there. And it will continue there so long as the wages keep coming. Now, it is possible for the laborer to grow to realize that the wages are not enough for him anymore. He will want to move to a place with higher wages, if possible, if that place is available. Now, it's also possible for the laborers to improve on his laboring so that he could attract higher wage from that same place. If your boss gives you an assignment to do, a task to handle, and you do a, 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 a sloppy job, by the time you come for promotion, he will tell you you don't deserve it. But if you are very good, you are improving every day, without you asking, even a difficult boss will be planning how to give you extra pay. The reason is simple. He's being difficult. He's being stingy. It's what will make him to increase your pay. Why? Fear of losing you. He doesn't want to lose you. So he knows he has to encourage you to stay. So he keeps increasing your pay. But if every time they give you one assignment to do, there is always complain. Even if you have spent 300 years in that place, nobody will give you increase. So, wages attract labor. Now, profit attract entrepreneur. Are we here? Huh? Is pastor talking too fast? Profit attract entrepreneur, not wages. Not wages. Now, if you are an entrepreneur, because you want to make profit, you decide which business to go into. That will give you the most profit at the shortest possible time with the shortest possible or the littlest possible effort over a longer period of time. That is, the profit will be coming for longer period. You look at your costs, you look at, if it's a small kind of business, you look at your gifts. What gifts do I have that will help me in this business? And when you go into it, you realize that the profit normally, naturally, will start flowing towards you because that is what you are looking for. Now, it is possible for you as you grow, as an entrepreneur, to realize that you need additional money, additional funds, additional capital to boost that business so that something bigger can come in. Why? Because you are attracted to profit. And profits are never enough. Just like wages too, they are never enough. They can never be enough. They can never be enough. The day your salary is enough for you, your guy has just you. Or your salary about it too. guy it in any income. The day your profit is enough for you, something is wrong with you as an entrepreneur. Because the, 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 the innate tendency of every man is to earn more, make more, be bigger, aspire for more. That's our innate tendency. So this is the time when you now need somebody to bring in more funds. That is, it gives you credit. Something that you take to put into a venture so that you make profit. That person gets Two things. The principal, that is the 200,000 euro loan he gave you and then the interest on the money. Now, that person has entrepreneurial uh, tendency too because he has to look at you very well. How are you using the 50K you are using for that business? How serious are you with it? 
if he comes to commit his 200k when you are not serious with your 50k both the 200 and the 50 will be lost so he will not give you so the poor complain that nobody gives them credit because they have not convinced intending creditors that they can use the credit well the lord will bless us in jesus name brethren let me tell us this the book of luke chapter number six from verse number 20 to 38 luke chapter number six from verse number 20 to 38 it is it kind of sum up the thinking of the jews this is jesus talking here it sums up the thinking of the jews and let me tell you this quickly the reason why you can google it the richest ethnic group on earth are the Jews. Praise the Lord. Are we still together? The richest ethnic groups on earth are the Jews. You can... And it is easy to find out why. Because I have researched it too. You too can research it. They have 10 commandments of wealth the Jews. They teach their children from childhood about money. From childhood. They teach their children. This is something they have practiced more than 3-4 thousand years. Am I talking to you? More than 3 thousand years at least. And they keep teaching their children every day. As a child, you are taught even at a young age, to divide your income into five places. How many? Five places. The first of your income is your tithe. That is 10%. The first, you don't, you don't joke with it. Jews don't joke with it. They never ever joke with it. Never. The second is a 10% also for charity. For the needy in the community. They say when you give to the needy that God sees you as a partner. It may sound crazy to you but that's the truth. God sees you as what? A partner. So he will make doors open more to you. So that you can reach more of the needy. Because God sees you as a, 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 a postmaster kind of that carries money to those who are in need. A courier through which he could funnel money to those who are in need of it. Because you yourself have committed your own 10%. So 10% goes for your tithe. 10% goes for your, your for charity. Then 20%, I've forgotten what the 20% go for again. The 50% share. Okay, I think 20% go for savings. Yes. 50%. No, 20, sorry. 20% goes for investment. 10% go for savings. Yes. Investing in the future, even as a child. You say, but let us say that person has maybe 1,000 naira. And he has given 100 naira for tight. 100 naira as a child. As a child. As a child. Who is not earning anything in your own mind? But that money he gives, the, that his father or mother gives him, is seen as an income to that child. Not something to go and just stick it sweet or whatever. Now it takes 10% for tight, 10% for charity as a child. As a child, charity. Now, the ten uh, percent uh, for investment, twenty percent for savings. That makes it how many? Fifty. Is that also the remaining fifty to spend on himself? So he has these five jars, like this uh, this container of jam, container of uh, ma uh, ma margarine. Of mayonnaise, 
those containers, he has five of it as a child. He drops this one here. 10%, drop this one here. Drops, when they go to synagogue, he takes it. They want for tight. Now, the one he spends for himself, that is how he does. That is how he grew as a child. He now grows into an adult following that pattern. Who told you that he will not be rich? Now, they also practice this thing like a kind of communalism. If you want to buy bread, you buy your bread from a Jewish baker. So that he, the Jews, the Jewish baker will make money from your own money. You need a carpenter. You find a Jewish carpenter first. It is where you cannot find the Jewish carpenter that you give it to another person, another or somebody from another nationality. With that, you are creating wealth in your community. Then the needy among you. You pull resources together from that your 10% 10, 10 that you have kept. That you, you give it to community. The community now be taking care of the needy among you. You have a Jewish shoemaker. His shoes are not very good. The community will take him to where he can learn how to make shoes. Better shoes. They help him learn it. When he comes out of that training, they start patronizing him. That's how they do as we go, if God permits, I will show you why poor countries will always be poor. If they are not careful. Why? Poor communities will always be poor. If they are not careful. Why? Poor continents like Africa will always be poor. If they are not careful. If we have the time. The Lord will bless us in Jesus name. So let us read. Luke, chapter number 20. Chapter number 6, rather. Sorry, chapter number 20, from verse 38. From verse 20 to 38. 6, Luke 6, 20 to 38. And he lifted up his eyes, this is Jesus, on his disciples. You know, he looked at his disciples. And said, Blessed be ye, poor. He was addressing them. Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. So what did the poor in 2024 do? The poor in 2024 should relax and go to heaven. Is that not so? No. That was not what Jesus meant. That was not what Jesus meant. They were poor, but they never lacked. Is that not so? They never went out to beg for anything. And yet you said they are poor. So Jesus was not discussing financial poverty the way we know it today. Monetary poverty the way we know it today. No. The poor in spirit. The people that the world see as poor. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. He said, boy, for yours, because they have left all and they have followed him. So the kingdom of his father belonged to them. So if a poor man now reads this one today and say, ah, you see now, Jesus love us. Say, Jesus, chop, knock, pujari. Ah, all of us deal together. No, that's not what Jesus is saying. That's not what he's saying. He did not encourage you to be poor. God never mentioned himself as the God of Lazarus, the beggar. He's the God of Isaac. God of Jacob, God of Abraham, never mentioned himself as God of Lazarus. It's not because God hates the poor, but God has made everything available for you to be rich. And I say you will be rich in Jesus' name. But you know that prayer and your prayer, just have what it takes, determination, discipline, and commitment. Only those three things, you will be rich. Those three things are enough. You'll be rich. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. The Jews, they believe that it is not good for you to labor for anybody more than seven years. Why? Because of the jubilee, the year of jubilee. That if you go and become more than that, that their tradition says they must put your head 
your ear to the wall and use nail to pierce your ear to the wall. Your nail, your your ear into the wall because you have refused to go. You love your master. But if you cannot even do the seven year thing, have a plan for yourself. You can have plan that the finance has not come yet, but you are building yourself, learning what you need to learn, gathering momentum, saving out of that your, your salary so that though today's country, because of inflation, it is not easy to save. It does not even make sense to save in money. But you can save in knowledge. You can save in materials. Are we together? Hey. It, is not, it doesn't make sense to save in money. You keep 1 million naira now. In the next two weeks, that 1 million naira will be 600,000. That's how it is. It's as bad as that. It is as bad as that. But do you know that somebody who is wise might have 1 million naira and use it to buy truck tires if he has the space to keep it. You understand? Use it to buy what? Truck tires. If I have that kind of money and I, want to, I don't want to spend it, I can go and buy truck tires. I can buy palm oil and store. I can buy things. Things that are not easily perishable. So that in six months time when I need the money, I can go and sell those things off. Make profit from those things because it will have gone up. The price definitely would have gone up. Then I now go and do what I want to do. So you can save in knowledge. That is, the money you have, use it to attend seminars, lectures, buy courses. You can buy courses. You can buy courses. See, you can buy a course. You can go and learn how to play guitar. Why? Because you want to go into music. But you don't have the capital to do all those things now. You understand? Buy that course. Learn it. 